On page two of unit two lab four, we're gonna practice nesting repeat blocks inside each other in order to draw some fractal art. Nesting is the process of putting blocks inside one another, typically used when you have like repeats inside of repeats or conditional statements inside of conditionals. We say that they're nested inside if they're within each other. First, we have to write three triangle drawing scripts. The red one with a side length of 100 steps, a blue one with a side length of 50 steps, and a green one with a side length of 25 steps. I've already gone ahead and written the scripts for the three triangles, and I also added one more script that takes my sprite to the middle of the stage, points it to the right, clears the stage, and puts the pen down, just in case the sprite is somewhere else, and I want to reset it. In number four, we take the entire script for the blue triangle and place it in the red triangle. We nest it inside the red triangle. Now when we run it, it's gonna draw a blue triangle at each corner of the red triangle. And if we read through the code slowly, we can see that after we set the pen color to red and we move 100 steps, then we're gonna repeat the following three times. We're gonna set the pen to blue, we're gonna move 50 steps, and then we're gonna turn 120 degrees. So we do that right after moving 100 steps for the red triangle, just before we turn 120 degrees to create the next side of the red triangle. Now I do wanna mention that there is a feature in Snap called visible stepping that allows us to see each line of code that Snap is on at a given time. So now with visible stepping enabled, I can run the code and see exactly how Snap is going through step by step. If you click on the little slider and drag it all the way to the right, Snap will go through the code really fast. And if you drag it all the way to the left, Snap will stop at each step or after each command and wait for you to click the little play button and continue. Let me actually show you that. If I drag the visible stepping slider all the way to the left, when I click on the script to run, you'll notice that it's stuck on repeat three. So what I have to do is click on the play button up here multiple times. Each time I want it to go on to the next step, I have to click it and I can see exactly how Snap is reading through my code and where it's at. And this makes it so much easier to debug whenever your code doesn't work correctly. In number seven, we have to figure out a way to make the picture shown. We're almost already there. All we have to do now is nest the green triangle block inside of the blue triangle block. So let me disable visible stepping let me clear the stage so we could reset everything. And now I'm going to nest this green triangle block, or script I should say, inside of the blue triangle script. And I put it in between the move 50 steps and the turn 120 degrees, just like I did for the red triangle with the blue triangle. And now when I run my code, it draws exactly the same picture. The only issue I have now is that we keep repeating and duplicating code over and over. There's probably a better way of doing things. Let's figure out where we're repeating steps and create an abstraction. So if we look at our code, we can see that the general pattern for creating a triangle is being repeated. We have to move a certain number of steps and then we always turn 120 degrees. The only thing that's different about each of these triangles is the certain number of steps that we're moving. So why don't we create a block that does that? In number nine, we're told to create the nested triangle block. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna right click, make a block, and this block is going to be a motion block, a command block also, and we're gonna call it nested triangle with a size parameter named size. So when I hit okay, here we go, we have our size, and I just wanna set the uh, type of size to number so that Snap knows to expect a number. Now the process for drawing a triangle is to repeat the following three times. We're going to move a certain number of steps. So let's say we'll move 10 steps, and then we're gonna turn 120 degrees to the right. Now you'll notice in 9b, they show us a conditional outside of this. So the reason for that is because they don't want us to draw a triangle. They don't want Snap to draw a triangle if its size is smaller than nine. Otherwise, if the triangles get too small, they won't even look like triangles. They're probably just gonna look like dots. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring in this conditional if it just so happens that the user types in a size of less than nine or the size changes to be uh, less than nine or if the size is less than nine, then this will not occur. And that should work. That should be able to draw a triangle when I bring it in from the motion palette, let's say a triangle of size 60. Let me clear my stage, let me run it. 
Oops, I just realized I misspelled triangle. Let me edit that. There we go. And when I hit apply, it fixes my block. Now when I run it, it draws a, a triangle of size 60. Let me change that to size 120. And it looks like it's not changing the size. What is going on? So there must be something wrong in my code. Let me debug it by going to edit. And let me run through it. It's repeating the following three times and it's, oh, here it is. It's always moving 10 steps. What we want to do is always move size steps. So let me hit apply and now my triangle should be drawn correctly. Perfect. So now when I change the input, the triangle drawn is going to be smaller. And if I try to draw a triangle of size 8, it won't do anything. Now in number 10, we're reminded that in problem 4, we dragged a copy of the triangle drawing script in between the move and the turn 120 degrees block. Now we can use this nested triangle block in a similar manner. So I'm going to edit it and I'm actually going to bring in the same exact block in between move and turn. Now this process of using the same block inside of itself is known as recursion. And recursion is really advanced and kind of tricky to understand at first. When you think about it, we're going to draw the triangle again inside of itself multiple times, but we're going to stop when the size gets too small. So we have to have a way for the size to get smaller and smaller, otherwise we're going to keep drawing smaller and smaller triangles forever and ever. So we need a way for this recursive block to stop eventually. So what we can do is we can make it so that the size is always half of the larger size outside. So we're going to bring in this block, and we're, see, we're shown this thing in 10a. If we bring in size divided by 2, what's going to happen is as this block keeps going, keeps getting nested and keeps going deeper and deeper within, so let's say I start with size 100 outside, the next one will be 50, the next one will be 25 inside, the next one will be 12 or 12 and a half. I don't know how Snap is actually going to handle that. And then the next one's going to be 6, but because we're only going to draw triangles if their size is greater than 9, then it's going to stop there. So let me try a triangle of size 120. Let me clear the stage and let's see what happens. So it's drawing a whole bunch of little triangles but stopping if the size gets too small. So the bigger I make this outside triangle, the more triangles it'll probably end up drawing. And that looks just about right. We've just created some beautiful artwork. I'm going to go over that one last time. So what's happening here is we're using the block, the nested triangle block, inside of itself recursively. I know recursion can be a little bit tricky, but I assure you that if you read through this code and watch this video over again, or go through it really slowly and talk to your friend about it, it's going to make a lot more sense. In fact, I have a challenge for you. Right now, pretend you're the computer and you start at size 160. Now go through the code over and over again and keep track of size. Okay, I'll see you on page 3.